Hi, my name is Alicia and welcome to Mess to Masterpiece. Today we are in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So we're going to go ahead and hop right in today. Now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles and they are very poor. But they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They even more, they even did more than we had hoped for their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to do. So we have encouraged Titus to encourage your giving in the first place to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving. Since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. I'm not commanding you to do this, but I'm testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. You know, the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ Though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. Here is my advice. It would be good for you to finish what you started a year ago. Last year you were the first who wanted to give, and you were the first to begin doing it. Now you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly and give according to what you have, not what you don't have. Of course, I don't mean your giving should make life easy for others and hard for yourselves. I only mean that there should be some equality. Right now you have plenty and can help those who are in need. Later they will they will have plenty and can share with you when you need it. And this way things will be equal. As the scriptures say, those who gathered a lot had nothing left over and those who gathered only a little had enough but thank god he has given titus the same enthusiasm for you that i have titus welcomed our request that he visit you again in fact he himself was very eager to go and see you we are also sending another brother with titus all the churches praise him as he is a preacher of the good news he was appointed by the churches to accompany us as we take the offering to jerusalem a service that glorifies the Lord and shows our eagerness to help. We are traveling together to guard against any criticism for the way we are handling this generous gift. We are careful to be honorable before the Lord, but we also want everyone else to see that we are honorable. We are also sending with them another of our brothers who has proven himself many times and has shown on many occasions how eager he is. He is now even more enthusiastic because of his great confidence in you. If anyone asks about Titus, say that he is my partner who works with me to help you. And the brothers with him have been sent by the churches, and they bring honor to Christ. So show them your love and prove to all the churches that are boasting about you is justified. So in this chapter, we talk a lot about giving and generosity. And so that's where we're going to kind of camp out today um, because I want you to notice that pattern throughout. Um, When we think of generosity, do you always think of money? I know at first I definitely did, but as I have continued to um, learn and grow in my life and my um, eyes be open to new horizons and just the various different opportunities, I realized that we can give a whole lot more than our money. We can give our time, we can give our space. Um, There's so many things that we are able to give. Um, We can give the gifts as well that God's given us and use that to make a difference in the lives of other people as well. Um, So there is such power in generosity. And I remember as a young high schooler, I think it was my freshman year of uh, high school, we had a speaker come to the church camp that I was attending that summer. And it was one of the elders in the church, so I knew him. But he started to unravel these, um, this 
presentation about money. And as a freshman, I had hardly any money. I did have some babysitting things and I always tried to save, but I really didn't have much. Although as he took those moments set aside for these high schoolers that he probably was wondering if they were listening, it really took root in my heart. And so from then on out, once I realized that God calls us to give, I started testing him in that in a sense. And throughout my life, when I had plenty, when I had nothing, God has continued to provide for my every need. Um, whether it was a bed or a car or clothes, or there's so many stories that I could share um, about the generosity that came through, has come in throughout many seasons of my life. Um, it's, it's truly is humbling. Um, but we can never, ever, ever outgive God. And I love that it mentions in here, it's not, he's not talking about, you know, giving to that you're broke and you have nothing, but obviously wise giving, but it's also prayerful giving too, because I've noticed that as I give, even though I didn't think it could make it work at the end of the month, somehow even still God provided. And it's not only in this act of giving, that's and the giving itself of money or however that looks um, for you but it's it puts our hearts in this posture of surrender and that's one of the biggest things that this gentleman taught me from the very beginning of my handling with money and it would obviously change as I get older and but that foundation and learning to let go of my finances not to hold on so tight to everything but just to give from the very beginning it that was able to be a common thread throughout the rest of my life. And so he'll never know the difference that he makes. Notice that, again, that posture of surrender, it goes from our finances and then we can start, it starts to seep into other areas of our life. And so when I started trusting him with my finances, I just said that, but then I started trusting him with my schooling or my housing or my health. Um, that that has continued to seep into my li throughout my life and that way then now it, again it's not easy and it's a day-to-day -day battle but I can say okay here Lord here it is this this is me this is what I have um, and he can take our little and multiply it just like he did with the boy in the lunch um, he, he it's not necessarily about the amount it's about our hearts and the giving so think about that um, as you are prayerfully considering where the Lord is asking you to hop in. And there's so many different organizations um, that you can be a part of, whether volunteering or um, even, even in COVID, there are still opportunities everywhere. Um, at churches, you can just start asking around for you to find your place to get plugged in, whether, you know, again, volunteering or to contribute financially as well. And you, I promise, you'll be so surprised that as you start giving and that your heart becomes that of giving, that it's going to transform your whole life. Because when we put God as the priority, then everything else can fall into place, including our finances. So let's play, pray right now. Lord, we thank you so much for, for how you bless us so abundantly, Lord. More than we can ever ask or imagine. God, you just pour your blessings upon us day in and day out. Even when we don't deserve it, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the example of your son and giving the ultimate sacrifice of his life for us, Lord. That, that we can have the opportunity to have a relationship with you, Lord. And I pray that as we posture our hearts and in surrender, including in that of our finances, Lord, that we may open our hands, open our hearts, open our minds for you to flood in, Lord, and to, to work in ways that we would have never imagined, Lord. Lord, give us the courage to give when you, we feel that tugging inside of us, Lord. Lord, help us to not be afraid, but to obey, God, and know that no matter what circumstance we face, that you will provide, Lord, every single time. You are so, so good. And we, we thank you again for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.